I started out as a junior web developer. Mostly my job at that time is to uh, document problems. Uh, then I started learning the rope, how to fix those problems. There are organizations that I've worked for that I actually worked there twice. I left, I came back. And one of the things that made me or made them ask me to come back, which I think sometimes uh, young people today don't think it's important, is that you need to master the fundamentals. One QR code, for instance, that you know it's becoming like the normal thing now for payment. Then I started working on it early 2016, 2015. My name is Tunde Ajibao. I'm an engineering manager at uh, System Spec Dealer. And uh, this is the story of how I got into technology, or what you guys usually call tech. Folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is PC Timmy. I'm a multifaceted creator, a marketing professional, and a teacher. And I'm passionate about growing people and growing businesses. See, the goal is that anybody who comes across me or any piece of my content is inspired and or motivated to get better in your business, in your career, and in your life. As you watch this video, like and comment and share to your friends and family if you like it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Enjoy this video, and I'll see you. Peace. Okay, I started uh, software development in 2001. Uh, I think uh, I should consider myself one of the first early set of people who went into software development. I studied computer science, uh, and my first uh, job or career started at a company in Surulere called, uh, the company is called ISSL. Um, I started out as a junior web developer, and uh, mostly my job at that time is to uh, document problem and then I started learning the rope how to fix those problems. It wasn't really more about course or uh, certificate because at that time there were fewer uh, available choices. A lot of choices now. You can be a DevOps developer, a DevOps engineer, a cloud engineer and, and this and that but at that time there were fewer actually. You are either a desktop developer or you are a web developer. There wasn't even mobile as at that time. so. Um, so I uh, started from junior web developer, became a web developer, uh, then uh, started another, in fact, I actually joined a startup uh, early 2003 and became a, a mid-level engineer, actually. And uh, from there became a, a senior web developer. Um, then I moved, actually career was also very fast paced at that time because computer was just becoming a thing in Nigeria. So, and companies were now realizing they need to do technology and they were looking for those who are capable. So my career was very fast paced. So most time I spent a year in an organization, join another one, you know, there were a lot of poaching at that time. So, and uh, before you know it, I became a senior web developer and uh, down the line, I became a, a, a DevOps engineer too at some point. Uh, started mobile and uh, even though as a senior engineer, I was already doing mobile as well. Um, then uh, I think it's on till, I was a senior engineer till uh, 2018. Then 2018 became a lead engineer in another organization. Then from that organization, I did another one year and then was poached from another company as a CTO. Actually became a CTO for that company and uh, from there became an engineering manager again. So uh, my career path had actually been one of uh, this an organization that actually discovered they needed someone with experience and they wanted to kickstart things as fast as possible. So uh, they offered me uh, more money and so I decided to move. There are organizations that I've worked for that I actually worked there twice. I left and I came back. I came back. And one of the things that made me or made them ask me to come back, which I think sometimes uh, young people today don't think it's important, is that you need to master the fundamentals. No matter what it is you do, you need to understand very well the fundamentals. So uh, the story uh, was I already left the organization and they got a contract or a job to do with one of the big telecommunications. And at that time, everybody in the organization, no one could do it. No one knew what to do. And it was becoming a problem. The telecom was already complaining that this is now becoming a, 
uh, a project that's never going to kick off. And so the CEO reached out back to me and said, Tunde, this is what we have. This is the situation. Do you want to work with us again based on that? I said, no problem. So I went back, took up the job and did. And that's because, like I said, I, I mastered the fundamental. At least from the beginning of my career, I wanted to, in fact, I always be my own ambition anyway, understand how things work. Don't just look for quick fix, which is what most people want to do these days. Just want a quick fix to this, quick fix to that. But you need to understand how things work. You need to master the fundamental. That's very important. So that's what I would say. It's one of the things that endear me to most of them. Because most of the job I have done, it's not even me applying for them. It's somebody making recommendation. So saying, oh, I know someone. I know this guy. He can do this. He can do that. To be honest, uh, sometimes I ask myself, there are people we started out together you know, about around the same time. And I look like the last man standing, if I can put it that way. Uh, I mean, with my own set or group of people. And part of the challenge I think they have is that they, they didn't master the fundamentals. So some of them fell out of the way. Some started other business and said, you know, this tech thing is becoming, I really can't, you know, cope with it. But for me, I think it was because I already mastered the fundamentals. So it wasn't, it, it sort of comes in easy for me. And over the years, I have moved from uh, this programming language in 2001, 2000, to that programming language, to this other programming language. And I could adapt, I could change. And, you know, I'm still here or still doing, you know, the same thing. So, and I think it's because I mastered the fundamental. That, that's very important. So that's part one. Part two also is that it's also important to have actually mentors. I didn't. It was also a big problem. Like I said, it was new in Nigeria then, you know, it was 2000. I mean, software company was actually existing then. And any software company that actually managed to survive, even around that time, is probably buying software from India and reselling it. They're not actually building. But I, I was lucky enough, the organization I joined first were building, were not reselling. So uh, find a mentor, it's important. Uh, someone that can uh, tell you, okay, don't do it that way. Uh, do it this way and do it that other way. So, uh, and then lastly, so I would say you also need to be tenacious. No, don't give up. Um, it, it's not, there's a the temptation or the danger to want to give in to a uh, quick fix method. There are lots and lots, and by the way, I detest it. A lot of people will say uh, six weeks boot camp, three weeks boot camp, one month boot camp. Maybe those things are good to start you up, that's fine. But those things will not satisfy you. So one will do two months, one week, six weeks of boot camp, think you already knows it all. And it's a lie. You don't. So when the real work hits you, then you know that you actually don't know a lot. So I would say that to start with that is not bad, but you just need to realize that that's not the end. You really have to uh, move forward. So tenacious, persevere, don't give up and say, now I don't know what to do again. So. Uh, very interesting question. I am risk averse. I don't like taking risk, actually. And that's what I think I'll probably now want to do. That's what I would say that is the reason why. It's not like I haven't started quite a number. In fact, I have actually started quite a number. Uh, and some of them, I didn't continue. Some other people pick it up and end up uh, doing it. I can refer to several. One QR code for instance, that, you know, it's becoming like the normal thing now for payment. Yeah, I started working on it early 2016, 2015, actually. Uh, did it to a point and say, you know what, you know, I'll drop it. Uh, let me give another one. Uh, when I was, uh, I was still living uh, somewhere in Egbeda, my office is on the island and I wasn't driving and it became a big issue that everybody has have to come out very early to go with uh, private cars in order to get to work early. So I thought to myself, so why not just do? Because then I realized that you know people have to be there by 4 a.m., 4:30 a.m. because everybody wants to beat whoever get there first. So I thought, so why not just build something that allow uh, both the driver and the people who want to enter communicate, you know, and you already see who and who and who. Uh, are available and who you can pick up and even know where they are. That's before Huba even got to Nigeria. But then I you know, toy with the idea, try something, then gave up and said, you know what, no, I don't want to continue. Uh, I had a friend then, we were together, and I shared the same idea with him. And lo and behold, he actually took it up. 
I didn't. He took it up. And then he had something called Decalo. And boom. And that's how he saw. I would say the challenge had always been, like I said, I don't like taking risk. Uh, I've done quite a number. Leave paid job. Try it for a year. It becomes a problem. Uh, and although maybe now it's even probably going to be easier, sure. Then there was little or no funding. But maybe I'm uh, old school. I would rather say build uh, for you know sustainability, not scaling fast. Because you said scaling fast. Uh, most time people think people want to scale fast are solving problem that does not even exist yet. And they don't even have that problem yet. So you're solving a problem you don't have. And that's going to be a big issue for you. And uh, from my own experience, yes, I've done things like that and they come to bite me. Like when I said I'm trying to start my own thing. I'm now trying to say, oh, uh, I want to be sure, I want to make sure that by the time this is running, she'll be able to hold one million people at a time. I don't even have 100 people yet. And then you're trying to solve for one million people. So why not just solve for 100 people now? Let the whole million first, let, let them come first and then try and solve that. So I think you should build for sustainability, not scaling fast. That's actually not neither here nor there. You know, it, it, it depends. At the moment, all of my team members actually remote. And, uh, and we started out like that like three years ago. And we've been doing it for three years now. And somehow, I'm also beginning to feel the brunt. It's affecting some things now. You know, uh, sometime uh, nine to five, yeah, they're working from home, and you call somebody around three o'clock, and they say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm on a bike, I'm running somewhere," and then there's an issue that needs to be resolved now. So I'm like, "Okay, this is not going to work." Uh, so I think we just have to mix it somehow. Well, companies are already adapting to what we call a hybrid, and so that means you know, come to work twice, thrice, or once, it doesn't matter, but as long as you are actually in the office uh, at some point in the week, then we can truly, truly solve problem. There are never that things you can do at home. So. My entire career, uh, 90, 85% had been startup, actually. My second career in 2003 was a startup. In fact, I was the only employee for more than, more than a half year building the product. So, uh, even though I am risk averse, I also know that I like the idea of we're trying to build something new. And maybe I just prefer that somebody else is bearing the cost, not me. So, but then I want to build something new. So I like the idea of working for startup than established company. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently working for a startup too, so. Okay, interesting. Um, final question, what's like the weirdest thing or funniest thing that one of your team members has ever told you or done. Funny, weird. It's one that happened way back in my life was someone, the company I said I was the only employee for more than one and a half year. So after a while, uh, we needed an extra hand. So a friend of mine we went to school together. He wasn't working there. So I said, okay, why don't you come? And then, so he started learning. And uh, after a while, I had to leave. So I left him there, so went to another company. And in that other company, I was being paid, let's say, let's say uh, 10,000 a year. And so we need another hand again in that other company. So I spoke with him and I asked him to come. So he came and he had conversation with uh, the boss. I don't know what the conversation was like at that point. Then lo and behold, I'm in 10,000 a year. He's earning 25. <laughs> And he's supposed to be reporting to me. Wow. And I was confused at first. <laughs> like, I couldn't understand why, what happened. So uh, another employee pushed me to ask. I didn't want to ask because I, I felt like I'm stuck in between. He's my friend. So if I begin to complain, myself, like I'm not happy for him. So I didn't want to complain. So but I don't know if I should ask. I said, okay, no problem. I won't ask him. I don't think it's his fault. I'll ask the organ now and say, what exactly is happening? And then he said, oh, it was because uh, uh, he told them of wonderful things he built, he built this, he built that. So they thought they could take him. His salary is actually 10,000, similar to mine. 
The 15 Extra is now is a consultant. And so they're paying the 15 as consultant. I was even more confused. I said, what did he tell you? Then he said, oh, he built this system or that system. Those were the things I built, not him. But I never said that. Whether, maybe that's the problem. When I was being employed or interviewed, mm -hmm. I never said any of those things. I just assumed well, it's on my CV now. So you saw it. So, and so I said, well, that, that's weird, actually. It's funny to me, too. But I left it at that. I never said uh, whether they should change or not change. Or, that, that's the only thing. The other thing you said, developers lie. Of course, they say they push something. Or they will tell you that, oh, I'm actually, I, I'll do it. Uh, no, 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 no. It's OK, no problem. Then you wait like another one hour. Then you call. I say, oh, oh, I'm sorry, my computer was hot. You know, it's now, you know, uh, freezing and I have to restart. And I say, okay, no problem. Uh, that happened. Okay? okay. Yeah. Then you wait like another one hour again. So what's happening? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Now I realize I have to reinstall the OS. And they're like, good gracious God, please, this is going to end. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you.